story time. My daughter, Emery, who's nine years old, had her first piano recital about a month and a half ago. I shot a video about uh, the fact that she was going to be taking part in a live recital for the first time in two years because of the China virus. Everything has been, as you're aware of, everything's been Zoom and online. So she was very excited about this piano recital. It was held at a uh, spectacular, at the spectacular Naples United Church on a gorgeous Sunday afternoon, about 45 days ago. And there was 20 other children, anywhere ages from seven all the way up to 17. And they were all children and teenagers that took lessons from this one teacher. Really wonderful lady, old school, my type of coach and teacher. Uh, so uh, this recital was the first thing they had done live in two years. And we've only been in Naples for four months. So Emery's really enjoyed, had really enjoyed the three months of teaching and mentoring she was getting from this lady. So the recital basically, it was at the United Church and each individual just walked up on the stage and played their own song for a maximum 45 seconds, maybe one minute. As a parent, you know those things, a lot of these things that our children do, they're, they're instantaneous. You, uh, you plan and then they get up there. So about a minute each. So uh, to make a, a short story long, um, Emery did not perform as she expected in the recital. She has uh, excellent musical talent. She, uh, she's an excellent player and she has abilities also outside of that area, singing, dancing. Uh, but she didn't perform as she expected or Chris and I expected on that Sunday. In fact, when she went up on the stage, she, she played her song. Nobody would have really noticed anything, but she made mistakes and she paused for a second or two. And uh, she was very dissatisfied with her performance. And she sat there after. And when we were walking out of the church after, you could tell that she was bitterly disappointed with her performance. So when we got in the vehicle, the, uh, the usual tears began and she was angry, she was frustrated, she was disappointed. And we had like a five minute drive home and uh, it was all tears and uh, frustration. So I let that pass. And of course, Krista, you know, talked to her as any mother would and, you know, said, you know, that she did her, her best and all this other stuff and that, uh, you know, next time she would certainly do better and that nobody noticed any of the errors, which they would not have. So about an hour later after we were back home, Emery went for a swim with me and she decompressed, which is important. And then I thought it was important as, uh, uh, I thought it was very important that I live by the principle, clear is kind. And the great Brene Brown uses this term all the time. Clear is kind, unclear is unkind. It means that honesty is everything. Brutal, brutal honesty in some cases is everything. It's everything with our wives. It's everything with our children. It's everything with our employees. Auth authenticity and raw honesty is everything in 2020 because there's almost none of it. We live in such a fake society of fake, fake social media, fake this, fake that, fake likes, fake comments, fake opinions fake outrage. So if you want to separate yourself from the crowd, one of the things that you can do 
to be a top one percenter in any area of your life is clear as kind. 100% honesty and authenticity. Something I teach to my five-star world builders. You need to be 100% honest and you need to be 100% authentic and you will stand out from the crowd like no other man. So using my value or my principle of clear as kind, I had a very candid discussion with Emery about how and why this disappointment happened at this piano recital. She was focusing on her feelings. She was focusing on the disappointment. She was angry, but she wasn't learning anything from the experience. One of the lines you hear a lot on, on uh, from the gurus and the pretend experts, especially on social media, the new feel good saying is, uh, there's losing and there's learning. <laughs> and as a pro, pro hockey coach, for 22 years amateur hockey coach and 31 years as an entrepreneur with 31 years of bloody nosed experience. What a load of bullshit that is. That there is losing and there is learning. Yes, losing does smarten us up. As my father, the great Frank McLean says, losing teaches us to smarten the fuck up and get better. That's what losing does. We do learn more from losing than we do from winning. In fact, nothing loses like winning. But losing teaches us to smarten up and become better. But only the top 1%, okay, learn from losing. The rest blame, the rest are victim, victimized. Uh, they, they, everything but learn, learning. So although that's a convenient little saying online, especially, that there's losing and learning, the fact remains that most businessmen, most husbands, most fathers don't learn, don't learn anything from losing. In fact, they repeat the same behaviors day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, and expecting a different result. And then they're frustrated and disappointed and angry when they don't get a when they don't get a different result. So that, my friend, is the definition of insanity. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So instead of learning from losing, we all lose. My God, we lose more than we win. But 99% of businessmen don't learn anything from their losses. In fact, they get up and do it again, do it again, do it again. So they do the same behaviors in their marriage, in their marketing, in their business affairs, in their marriage, same things over and over again, expecting a different result uh, with their children, with their mental health, their physical health, their time management, and their legacy building the same behaviors over and over again, expecting a different result. So no, they don't lose, they don't learn from losing. So I wanted this to be a different experience for my daughter Emery, because I want every experience to be a learning experience and clear is kind. So I talked to her and I asked her some questions. All you have to do is question people to get out the truth. And I asked her several times, how and why this happened. Why was, how was her performance, why was her performance not at her best? Why did she flinch? Why was she nervous before instead of excited? And these were all the candid questions, clear as kind, that I asked her that brought out the truth. It made it authentic, it made the discussion authentic and honest. So we talked about a whole bunch of things. She was nervous before the recital, which is not like Emery. Emery's in a lot of high level sports. Uh, she's one of the top uh, nine year old hockey players in the country and she plays against 14 year old boys. She doesn't get nervous, she gets excited. If she's playing tennis, she gets excited. If she's playing uh, chess, she gets excited. If she's 
at the equestrian competition, she gets excited uh, and she gets the butterflies, which I always tell her, that's great, it shows you care. I get, I, I speak in front of a thousand people, 2000 people, webinar trainings, whatever it is, I get butterflies, which means I care. I don't get nervous because I'm prepared, but I certainly do get excited and I get those butterflies that I get when I'm coaching hockey uh, in any of those situations, which means, it means you're ready. It means you're, you care, it means you're prepared and it means you're excited. You're not, uh, you're not afraid, you're not scared, you're not anxious. Any of those weak, weak emotions. So that's pretty important. Good morning. So um, she was nervous before the recital, which is not her. And I know that because I drove her there. So I asked her why she was nervous and we talked a little bit. Were you nervous because you didn't feel that you were properly prepared? Yes, clear as kind. Then we talked about, you know, going up on the stage and, and having to look at the book in uh, the book and having to, you know, turn the page during the song. And I asked her, you know, why did you have to turn the page during the song? Why did you even have to look at the book when normally, normally she knows her material so well, backwards, sideways, upside down, that she doesn't even have to look at her music sheets. She does not have to look at them. This time she did. Once again, not prepared. Haven't done the work. Not prepared like normal. She was like a salesperson who didn't know their phone scripts. They had to read them. Not ready. Not prepared. Haven't done the work. So we went through all the details and we had a very positive talk, but a very candid talk. And it all got down to one bottom line. She hadn't done the work. I teach my hockey players and I have for years at pro and amateur, like the great Stephen Covey said, private victories precede public victories. Think about that. Private victories precede public victories. That means that we do our work in the dark, in practice when nobody's looking, so that we can win championships in the spotlight if we choose. Private victories precede public victories. I used to bring my hockey team to center ice on practice nights. It's, it's cold, they've been working like animals for two hours. Uh, it's late, they're tired, they're fatigued. There's not a single person sitting in the stadium. It's in black darkness except on the ice. And I would always call them together when we did our stretching at the end and tell them, look around, who's here? There's no mums, there's no dads, there's no aunts, there's no uncles, there's no season ticket holders, there's no raving fans, there's no music, there's no mascots. This is where you'll win or lose a championship. You don't win or lose in games. You don't win or lose in games at all. You win or you lose games in practice or lack of practice. And perfect practice makes permanent. There's no such thing as practice makes per perfect practice makes permanent. Perfect practice makes permanent. So not only the time you practice, but how you practice. So Emery didn't have perfect practice the week before, and it didn't make permanent because she had to use her music sheets. She didn't have her normal confidence she didn't have her normal certainty. So she, bottom line, again, did not put in the work. She worked hard, but she didn't, she didn't put in championship effort. She didn't put in championship work ethic. And then she didn't, wasn't able to execute like a champion. And we talk more about this, how, you know, uh, championship effort, hard, hard practice. Hard, hard practice equals fun games. I've taught that for so many years. You can't have fun at a particular sport. You can't have fun doing anything if you're not good at it. And I know there's people that are, you know, they're terrible at golf and somehow they like it, but that's not me. I need to practice. I need to work at something. I need to be good at something to enjoy it. I don't enjoy struggling for years at something. 
I just, I'm more of, I'm a practice, perfect practice makes permanent kind of person. So our children can't enjoy things. They'll want to stop doing things. Well, parents now allow them to quit things that they're not good at, that they don't enjoy, but they don't enjoy them because they're no good at them. Because parents, as parents, we haven't made them practice. Practice is huge. I don't care if it's piano. I don't care if it's chess. I don't care uh, if it's karate, martial arts, skating, swimming, uh, math club. I don't care what it is. We as parents, as leaders, need to insist that our children practice every day. Every single day. There's no days off. Just like as a badass millionaire, there's no days off. I'm out here walking seven days a week. That way I don't have to do it three hours. And when you miss practice, the thing that I always think about is if you miss your half an hour of practice, then the next day you gotta do a full hour. Or if I miss my one hour of writing time, my marketing time that I have every day, if I ever miss, which I don't, then the next day I have to do two hours. And to me, that's like, I don't wanna do that. So I write for an hour every day. I walk for an hour every day and I read for an hour every day, minimum. Every single day is the secret. Perfect practice makes permanent. So there were some tears when I challenged Emery and I said, you know, you didn't do the work. You didn't do the perfect practice. You didn't uh, earn it in, in private first, you know, practicing at home. So then in public, it wasn't fun. And that's something that I've preached to her for as many years as she's been competing in anything is hard practice equals fun games. Hard practice equals fun games. The recital, I said, was that fun? And she's like, no, it was horrible. Well, it was horrible because you didn't have hard practice. You didn't put in the hours. So in this situation, losing, she is learning from losing. If I don't have this discussion with her, if I don't have this conversation with her, then losing, she doesn't learn anything. She, it's just frustration and it's anxiety. And the number one thing that I fucking well hate is all of a sudden it's somebody else's fault. Well, you know, uh, uh, you know, I was distracted or I wasn't feeling good. Bullshit excuses. When we don't learn, we make excuses. When I believe that as parents and leaders and employee, employers of people, we need to live by a principle of clear as kind. When we bullshit our kids, whether they're young, whether they're teenagers, whether they're young adults, when you bullshit your wife and kids, you're just crippling them. You're just crippling them and disrespecting them, especially our children when we're not clear and we're not kind, oh, attaboy, good job, you did your best, winning doesn't matter, all this kind of stuff when they didn't do the work. If they do the work, if they do the work and they don't win, that's, you know what? That's fine by me. But when they don't do the work, like Emery didn't do the work, then it's not okay. Then I don't give a fuck about the tissue box. I'm gonna call them as I see them. And she's going to understand that, you know what, I'm paying for these lessons. Krista and I gave our, you know, we invested our whole Sunday going over there. Everybody dressed, dressed up at the church, the whole thing. Do the work, do the work. Do the work so that it's fun. Do the work so there's no tears. Do the work so uh, everything that you're doing is fun. It's, e it's not easy, but it's fun. Hard practice equals fun games. And that's a huge lesson. And I wanted to make sure that my daughter learned that lesson, which she did, uh, out of this piano recital. Because, uh, you know what? 99% of businessmen and our children and everybody else in our world, they don't learn from losing. They don't learn from losing. And it's my job as a leader, as a father for certain, that clear is kind. You know, why did this happen? How did this happen? How can we make sure that this never happens again? You didn't do the work. 
clear as kind. You didn't do the work. As an old mentor of mine said in pro sport, you didn't earn or deserve victory. You did not earn or deserve victory. If we can get that message into our children's heads, what kind of an advantage are they gonna have in this entitlement world that we live in now? Our kids will be unstoppable. If they have a mindset of 100% accountability for every result in their life, if they accept responsibility for every win and loss in their life, our children will rule this world because they're gonna encounter nothing but the exact opposite. Victimhood, entitlement, not my fault, excuses, excuses, excuses. If we can get our children in to accept 100% accountability, to embrace self-reliance, if it's going to be, it's up to me, doing the work, earning and deserving victory, there's something they're never gonna hear in a school. There's something they're never gonna hear on a t-ball uh, t -ball field anymore. There's something they're not gonna hear anywhere else. So you need to be the messenger. Earn and deserve victory. Do the work. And hard practice equals fun games. If you're gonna do something, put in the hours every day so that it's fun and it's enjoyable. And if you're not going to put in the hours, then stop doing it. It's an insult to the skill or the sport or whatever it is, the craft. If you're not going to try to master the craft to your ability, run your own race. If you're not going to try and master a craft, then don't take it. You know, you don't have to be the next Tiger Woods. You don't have to be, you know, the, the next whatever. You need to be you to the best ability. And we have to teach that to our children. They need to become the best version of themselves. Every day they need to run their race, not somebody else's race, not your race. Emery has to run her race and her job is to become the best version of herself. So I wanted to share that story tomorrow. I'm gonna to share part two of that story with you, which proves my point. It proves my point that our discussion, our discussion about accountability, our discussion about self-responsibility, our discussion about hard practice equals fun games, our discussion about, you know, how and why losing happened was a learning experience. She did the 1%. She lost, and because of our discussion, she smartened up and became better the next time. And I'm gonna share that story tomorrow. Tomorrow, It's uh, her experience a couple weekends ago at this high level equestrian competition, her first in Florida. I call it horsing, horsing, riding horses, not my thing. Uh, but uh, how her mindset completely shifted and how now she does look at losing. If she loses, at least she's done the work. And yes, there is learning if you're clear and kind. There's no learning if we bullshit our kids, if you coddle your kids, if you coddle your employees, even if you coddle your best friend. There's no progress without the truth. There's no progress in business. There's no progress in your personal life. You'll never progress as a man if you don't tell yourself the truth. Clear and kind starts with you. It starts with me. Every morning I splash water on my face, clear as kind. On the mirror are my goals, my values, my mission, but I need to be clear with myself first. And unclear is unkind. So it all starts and ends with the man in the mirror, and then you go from there. But clear is kind, and hard practice makes fun games. And we need to be constantly honest, and authentic with the people that matter most in our life. Honest and authentic with our wives, with our children, with our grandchildren, with our employees. They want to know the truth. They want to be, they want to be, they want to, they don't want surprises. They want to know the truth. People can do hard things. Your wife can do hard things. Your children can do hard things. Your employees, the good ones, can do hard things.
But it all starts with clear is kind and unclear is unkind. You patronize your wife, you patronize your children, you patronize your employees, and you will cripple them. And they will not, you will not have the relationship, you will not have the freedom, you will not have the personal sovereignty, and you'll keep doing this over and over again, and you'll wonder why you have the same shit results. Well, that is, my friend, the definition of insanity. So let's do something different. Let's embrace the principle of clear is kind and hard practice equals fun activities. And at the end of the day, do the damn work. You as a father, as a husband, you set the tone. There's nothing more contagious than a positive example. So you be that positive example. Forget the speeches and be a leader by example, you know? Every area of your life can be a contagious example for your wife, your children, people in your community. Your marriage, your marketing, your business, your physical health, your mental health, every one of those areas of your life, you can improve with clear is kind by doing the work. Every area of your life that you're struggling in, start doing the work. Every single day, do the work. And any area of your life, that you do that automatically now, you're setting a contagious positive example for the most important people in your world. Our children don't care what we say, they care what we do. Our spouses, our secret weapons, they don't care what we say, what comes out of our mouth, they care what we do. People are watching constantly and when you think they're not, they are. Our children are watching, our teenagers are watching, our young adults are watching. You know, every, people are just constantly. So is your life a warning or an example? Are you doing the work or are you cutting corners? So that's my story today from, uh, from my daughter, Emery Eva. It's like, you know, people in 2022 now, they're afraid of tears. And I don't get it. I don't get it. To accomplish something every in your every day, it's like the great Jim Valvino said, you know, we gotta laugh every day, we gotta cry every day, we gotta think, we gotta think independently every day. There's a whole bunch of things that we have to do every day for it to be a great day. And one of the things that we have to do every day is we have to cry, and we have to laugh, and we have to think, and we have to do some other things. But you know what? I'm not afraid of tears and personally or in my family because sometimes, you know, that's emotion that teaches us to smarten up and become better, like my dad said. And if we just go through life now, ignoring any teaching moments, afraid of any adversity, afraid of anything that's, you know, controversial or anything that would bring a tear, we're literally crippling our young people. No generation, my generation, we have failed. We have failed our children like no other generation in history. So we better smarten up and become better because no generation in history has failed their, their children, our most valuable, most valuable valuable resource our children our future no generation has failed their children more than my generation and this is why i'm so passionate about it this is why i'm a dedicated student this is why i'm learning i'm losing i'm winning i'm failing i'm succeeding i'm i'm just so passionate about it is we need to learn, we need to actually learn from our failures, not just, oh, well, I failed and then do it again. We need to learn from our failures. And the secret to that is clear is kind. Speak the truth, clear is kind, and unclear is unkind. We have way, way, way too much unclear in our world. Do the opposite, be a top one percenter, be the person that's honest, authentic, consistent, and zero needy, okay? Our children need the truth. They don't need our bullshit 
and our political correctness. Our spouses, they deserve the respect of candid, candor. They deserve harsh honesty, whatever it takes, but they don't deserve the disrespect of framing and political correctness and you know this this half truth and this half truth just tell the truth and build a relationship that's that's how you show respect for your wife by telling the damn truth same thing with our employees all the great leaders were ca are candid are are straight from the hip calm as they see a men and women they all are they're all known they're all notorious and infamous and famous for their brute honesty. Any football coach, any baseball leader, any military leader, any business leader, any church leader, you name it, you name it. What are they famous for? Clear as kind. That's it for today. I'll continue with part two of the story tomorrow. You can get a copy of my brand new book at nobullbook.com. That is a clear as kind book. It is not everybody's cup of whiskey. How to not get your ass kicked in business and in life. It's my 25 rules for you living life and doing business on your own terms. So it is a book for cleaners. It's a book for closers. It's a book for contenders, not pretenders. It's not for do nothings and, you know, excuse makers. It's for champions, not chumps. You can get a copy at the link below and it's $20 it's a hard copy book I don't do any of this ebook nonsense I don't do any of this go fetch PDF I wrote and I print a real book and I'll FedEx that to you on my dime uh, so it's $20 for the book I'll pay for the shipping and for the delivery good morning Sam Walton rule eh? anybody within five to ten feet smile hello Sam Walton, badass Walmart founder, drove a used half-ton truck. Sam Walton with his dogs in the truck, badass. Middle America badass. And driving his used half-ton truck with his big dogs in it. And they asked him one time, they said, Sam, why don't you have a Rolls Royce? One of the richest men in America. He says, can't put dogs in a Rolls Royce. Can't put dogs in a Rolls Royce fucking badass fucking badass so also there's a free web training below worldbuildingwebinar.com nothing to buy it's a 90 it's a 70 to 80 to 90 minute training i forget and it'll teach you the top 10 secrets to building your own world your rules your freedom uh, that kind of stuff and uh, if you'd like to be put on a waiting list and apply for my next world building coaching program. It's an eight week sprint. Uh, you can do that below badassmillionaire.com slash apply. And I'll be opening up that in probably another month or two. If you wanna be placed on a waiting list and apply, uh, you can do that below. That's it, that's it for today. Uh, two day, it's, uh, we're getting near the end of school here. Emery's in her last week of school, and then uh, we're gonna be heading back to Canada, to our lake house for the summer. So we're excited about that, and, uh, but still lots of work to do here. So until, until uh, tomorrow, two words that change my life, two words that change, that'll change yours. Be relentless.